going to be an unusual vlog. So, it's uh, just about November, a few days away. So I figured it was time to start my 2020, I don't say I'll call them predictions, but my 2020 advice about software development programming. All right, let's first start with the conclusion of the video. What are the top three programming languages for small business and freelancing? In no particular order, it's Python, JavaScript, and PHP. And I'll give an honorable mention to SQL. Although some people would wrongly argue that SQL is not a programming language, it is a 4GL language and it's infinitely important. Anyway, so that's the conclusion. If you want to walk away now, now you know. Now I'm not saying these are the best languages of all time and everything else sucks. No, I'm saying for small businesses and freelance work, those are the top three languages that you're going to see used in the field. Now, I'll give you a sneak peek. I won't go into it in this video, but in the next video, uh, what are the top three languages for large organizations? That's going to be Java, C Sharp, and Python again. There you go. So, um, again, all those other languages out there, Swift and Kotlin and Dart and um, C++ and C, they're great languages too, given the right circumstances. But this is not about which are great languages. This is about the top three languages. Just in case you're wondering, this is Montreal. Uh, part of Montreal called Outremont. And uh, right around the corner from my place. And I figured that I'd give you guys a little tour as we talk about this subject. Those guys with the leaf blowers over there, I have to tell you, it's one of my pet peeves. He's, uh, he's blowing the leaves, burning up fuel, making a lot of noise. So why did I choose Python, JavaScript, and PHP as my top three languages for small and medium-sized businesses? Because those are the languages that small and medium-sized businesses will use quite a bit. You could also argue Ruby too, but we're going into 2020. And uh, yeah, so let's talk about the one that might be the most controversial, and that of course is PHP. PHP is still the most widely used server-side programming language in the world. A big part of it is because of content management systems like Drupal and WordPress and uh, maybe Joomla to a much lesser extent, but nonetheless. And uh, yeah, so many small, uh, little, very useful uh, libraries and scripts out there, shopping carts and forums are written in PHP. And being a PHP developer who can maintain these projects, who can extend these projects, um, there's just a lot of money to be made, especially in the freelance space. You have to understand how many small businesses are actually using uh, WordPress. It's crazy. WordPress, Drupro, and, and Joomla, there's a huge number of small businesses use them. That alone is gonna ensure tons of work for PHP programmers and developers uh, going into 2020 and way beyond. I think JavaScript is pretty obvious. JavaScript is the only game in town when it comes to writing programming code inside of the web browser. So when you look at libraries like React and Vue.js, Angular, it's all JavaScript based. Then of course you got server-side JavaScript, which is Node.js, which is still very popular. And that's not going anywhere, going anywhere anytime soon. But I remember a few years ago, Node was like, oh my God, Node's the best thing in the world and you should burn all languages. But Node has kind of come down. It's lost its, uh, its hype machine mojo, which is good because now it's going to settle down to what uh, is reasonable. Eh, I think I'll go this way. So it's kind of cool. Uh, Node is going to be around for a while. Um, one thing about Node, PHP, and uh, Python that you got to recognize, one common element between the language, the languages, 
is that they're easy to write and they're quick to write, meaning you could get apps up and running very quickly with uh, JavaScript, PHP, and Python, very quickly, much more quickly than it than it takes you to get an app up in, let's say, Java or C Sharp. Again, I'm not taking a shot at those languages. I'm just saying it's the reality of the situation. It's trying to rain, so I'm going to head back to the car. My camera here, I don't think it's waterproof. My good. So why Python? Well, Python, again, can be used for web apps. It can be used for server automation. It can be used for uh, binding processes in servers. That's server automation, I suppose. Used in AI, ML. It's used all over the place. So it's like a general purpose programming language. So that's why Python is the one language that you can see both in the uh, large scale business and small business. So because a lot of small businesses deal with contractors and freelancers, Python is in that list as well. So Python you can see in small business, you can see it uh, in big business, you can see it uh, in all different areas. It's, it's one of these interesting languages that's really gaining a lot of popularity now. Whether you look at JavaScript, Python, or PHP, they each have their advantages and disadvantages. And a lot of times, the language that you choose comes down to personal taste, comes down to the infrastructure that you find uh, the company in question has. So for example, let's say you go to a company. I'll tell you a story. I've told, I've told this story before. It's back in, way back in the 1990s, where I was uh, a freelance coder, freelance developer. And at that point in time in my career, I was big into Java. Like Java was the language. Everything I tried to do, I tried to do in Java. And you gotta understand, at that time, Java was the, the new light, nimble language. It was the hot language. And um, so I walk in to see a client and they wanted me to extend their web app and I wanted to do in Java, of course, but they refused because they had already built part of it in PHP. So they had all these PHP assets in place. And I said, let's just do it all in Java. And they said, no, we invested money in this PHP system that we like. We just want to add some functionality and capability to it. So I'm like, all right, we'll add some functionality and capability to it. Like, I wasn't going to get the gig I wasn't going to get the job unless I uh, provided the work in PHP. I did the work in PHP, even though I didn't want to do PHP. And it was, uh, it's a story I tell because it was seminal. It was a seminal moment in my programming career because it taught me the rule that I'm teaching you now. Companies were, are not going to want to trash a bunch of work that they've already invested in. They're not going to want to get rid of their their PHP-based assets or their Python-based assets or their uh, JavaScript-based stuff just because you don't like that particular language. You're going to have to adapt to whatever they have in place. So if you look at PHP, there's a huge install base, right? So there's going to be a lot of ad adapting there if you don't do PHP. And... Uh, so yeah, how did I get on this tangent again? You know what, I forgot the point I was trying to make. So there you go, those are the top three languages for small businesses and freelance. JavaScript, Python, PHP. Why? Because there's a lot of legacy there. A lot of people, small businesses, already use these languages, so they're not going to want to break away from that. They're not going to want to break away. Uh, two, they're light, fast, easy to write with versus, let's say, Java or C Sharp to that effect. And the final point you want to take away, it doesn't mean that the other languages are crap. It just tells you what the market is like, you know, what the market is like. And that's what's in. You can't lose with any of those languages if you want to get into small business and freelance development, you can't lose. In another video, I'm going to talk about uh, the top three languages for enterprise, for larger organization. Again, Python, C Sharp, Java. I'll tell you why 
what's going on, what kind of work you can expect. It's a totally different lifestyle when you're writing code for large organizations versus smaller ones.